Welcome to Snooze with Sam. Ambient sleep stories, meditations, and ASMR from Scotland. If these stories help you, I'd love if you considered becoming a patron. You will be credited in every story and could access member-only benefits such as early access and patron-only stories. You can find the link in the description. My name is Sam, and I'm from a wee northwestern island called Skye. Like so many of you, I can find sleep difficult due to a number of reasons. So throughout my lifetime, I've developed a passion for helping people connect with and improve their well-being in every sense. The subconscious mind is a complex place. I understand the detrimental states we can arrive at and how precious sleep can become as a result. These stories have been created with this at their heart. So as always, lie back, take a deep breath, and enjoy this story. This story is called The Sleepy Cat. Somewhere in the depths of rural Scotland was a cottage. This cottage was nearby to a busy little farm, always bustling with tractors, noisy glaiket sheep and other agricultural activities. And by the way, Glaikit just means kind of looking like an idiot, or a bit gormless. Bless the wee woolly maggots. And all the while, Pouncing through the hedgerows, the soggy paws of a wee ginger cat padded and slalomed through the long grass. Dragging little beads of water with them. This little cat was named Morag. As much as this wee moggy 
would have preferred to be nice and dry. She accepted it was just the nature of, effectively, being a sponge on legs. She had been dry when she'd left, but such is the emotional roller coaster of Scottish weather. Things had taken a turn for the drizzly. The sky was a turmoil of churning rain clouds, watery veils of downpour, broken sun rays, and patchy teal skies. As much as the hedge provided a little bit of shelter, it wasn't enough to please Morag on this particular occasion. So she had only one place on her mind. From beneath the brambles, her wee whiskers twitched as she looked up at the roof of the farm cottage. And there it was, the chimney. There was smoke coming from it, but only a little. The fire was yet to get going. If she left now, it would be in full bore roar by the time she got inside. Just the way she liked it. Time to move. Leaping from the rutty ditch beneath the berry bushes, Morag made a break for it into the now torrential downpour, much to her silent protest. Huge raindrops plopped on her head, rattled her ears, and soaked her back. She wasn't sure if making a run for it was actually helping at all. If anything, she just felt it got her fur wet even faster. A 
a deep mood set in. A mood that only cats can conjure. If her human was near at this present moment, they would best be wary. The front door was in sight, very nearly there. Across the gravel path she sprinted, not even looking to check for farm traffic. At the border of the house, waxy willow trees drooped their long spindly branches towards the ground beneath, tickling the flower beds and grass. It was nearing winter, so most flowers were away. But a few resilient giant daisies pushed proud of the surface still. But Morag didn't give a mouse's gammy tail about the traffic, willow, or the flowers. Which, by the way, she mostly used as a convenient bathroom. All she desired was to feel the heat of a toasty house. Bolting for the door, she tucked herself under the small aperture of shelter provided by the roof line. She then sucked in great lungfuls of air and started singing her wee head off. On and on and on she meowed, calling for her owner to come to the door. Hmm. They're taking far too long for my liking. I shall stare intently at the door handle, willing it to open, Morag thought to herself. It seemed to work, as a minute or so later, with all the will in the world, 
the door clunked and rattled on the far side. The handle twisted. And then the whole door opened just a crack. Which was more than enough. At barely a few inches, she pushed her wee face into the gap, prizing the door open further, and rushed past a pair of human legs. A wee chirrup of approval sounding involuntarily. With a trail of wet paw prints in her wake, Morag padded through the hallway, around the perimeter of the kitchen, which smelled of chicken or something similarly fit her consumption. Very thoughtful of them. And then she sauntered straight into the living room. Soft carpet instantly relieving her chilly, soggy toe beans. There it was. If cats could express more visible emotion than either wide eyes or not wide eyes. Then there would be cartoon hearts in place of her own. Right there in front of her, as she'd hoped, was the fire in all of its blazing, crackling glory. A second involuntary noise left Morag. This time, a low, thrumming purr. Simply the sight of the glowing charcoals and flaming pine wood was enough for her to work up an appetite for a good snooze. She could hardly wait. Her owner had now returned to their chair and book in the corner of the living room. Fresh cup of tea steaming on the side table.
It seemed to Morag that all the signs were there, that it was time for an afternoon snooze. Everyone was winding down, sheltering from the turbulent weather outside. Padding over to the fireplace, she felt the radiated heat Swallow her like a warm cuddle. A slave to her body. Her eyes couldn't help but close. At the wonderful feeling of all that toasty heat making its way through her fur to her body. After a wee compulsory sniff of the carpet and wood splinters lying in front of the wood burner. She spun a couple of times on the spot, testing the area. Normally, Morag could take an age to settle somewhere. Usually fussy about exactly what makes a comfortable spot. Of course, she would just argue that she has particular taste. Those of you who know cats might empathise at their temperamental requirements that can often change every 10 seconds. Eventually, the wee cat sat her bum down parallel to the fire and curled a little, head still aloft. Mm. Yes, that'll do. to herself, becoming more and more contented by the second. She liked to have one side of her body roasting slowly by the fire, with the other remaining cool. Much like a human poking a foot thermometer 
from the end of their duvet. She'd always been curious about that method, which her owner did. But lately, Morag herself had adopted a similar move. Excellent snooze tactics. She had to concede. As her fur heated through, she could almost feel the steam of the rainwater lifting. Her right side feeling lighter, fluffier, and less dense than her left. Mildly amusing, the ginger cat thought. Through slowly blinking eyes, Morag passed her gaze around the room. seeing if anything had changed or something interesting had appeared since her outdoors adventure. Up on the mantelpiece, great plant adorned each corner. Peace lilies, spider plants, and petite succulents lent a dose of greenery to the contemporary whitewashed fascias of the hearth and stone walls. On more than one occasion, Morag had battled any low-hanging sprouts from the plants, boxing them about like Mike Tyson, much to the disgruntlement of her owner. Morag preferred to think she was doing them a favour, keeping the pesky weeds trimmed and out of the way. But cat logic is a peculiar acquisition. On the walls, simple, colourful artwork of local scenery spoke of wild sea vast open heathers, 
and great highland glens. Adding a sense of patriotism even to a wee cat like Morag. On the sideboards, handmade models of old Scottish ships standing proudly endowed the room with a vintage character. Well, nothing new there. Neither with the sofas or as Morag thought her enormous scratching posts these aqua blue squishy wonders must have been her favourite thing in the whole house. Apart from the humans' dinners, of course. It's as if they were specifically designed for a cat in the first place. Just the right materials, the ideal level of give, and the perfect claw catch. She found it so satisfying just to pull away at all the fibres, causing quiet yet thorough destruction of the bottom ten inches. No. Nothing new, Morag confirmed. Just the same old cosy living room. Her gaze fell back on the steaming cup of tea. Three ribbons of moisture rose like the flames of the fire, vanishing into thin air. Aside from the crackling of the open fire, the only sounds were the periodic flipping of book pages as her owner devoured the novel.
staring at the tea. Morag was encapsulated by the rising steam. Her entire focus fixated on the little plumes. She could feel herself getting sleepier and sleepier. At this point, she wasn't even sure her eyes were open. for her own company. She let her mind wander where it wanted. And all she could see was a piece of gravy-soaked chicken. Mm -hmm. 